Welcome into another edition of The Lesson T, part of Fairways and Greens Online, brought to you by our friends at the Family Golf and Learning Center and also the folks at uh, LFA Elevated Performance. And that's what we've got for you today. There he is, John Crash Benny, uh, who's going to join us uh, every couple of weeks in, in Crash. Elevated Performance and, and what you do golf wise because you also do all other sports and all other athletes and things of that nature um kind of give everybody a description of, of of what elevated performance does and intertwine for me tpi because that's a big buzzword you're tpi certified somebody out there may go what what is tpi so kind of give us a little bit of what you do and tpi sure well first thanks for having me jay um First, with Elevated Performance, we're a small business. We're private one-on-one, two-on-one training. We get a lot of small groups of kids or our young athletes. I just had a, a mom um, and his young golfer, who a 12-year-old junior golfer who belongs to Meadowbrook. Um, they got referred to me from a uh, golf professional out there at Meadowbrook, and we've been helping them for the last six months. It's really neat to see a mom and a kid come in together, the kid's hitting the ball farther, you know, he's just learning how to move his body, which is cool. So we focus on quality over quantity. So it's not so much how much you lift or how much you can squat or bench press. You know, we kind of learned from those mistakes back in the early 80s and 90s and early 2000s. You know, it's more about how can we get the body moving better, moving pain-free and moving without restrictions. So one of the certifications I have is uh, through TPI, that's the Titleist Performance Institute. Very cool, very specific to golfers. We look at quite a few uh, golf swing characteristics to kind of determine where you're tight, where you're limited, how can we loosen that area up, or how can we get you performing better, performing without risk of injury. So you're only as good as your weakest link. We want to catch all those weaker areas up to your stronger area. So you could be taking a golf lesson with a golf professional and he could, you know, want you to set a club in a certain position. But if you have a pre-existing shoulder injury where your rotator cuff's limited, you might then come over the top or you could early cast. There's all these swing characteristics, all these quote unquote golf terms that we look at. Um, so one of the guys that you see the picture there, Darren Payne come in, you know, he's not a long hitter, but he's a very good golfer and he just gets tight and he wants to keep his back loose, stay flexible. Obviously from his hockey career, he's had a lot of injuries. Um, so we got him an app on his phone, you know, he's stretching on a regular basis. He's doing these movements that we give him, and, and hopefully he's playing better or he's, he has more endurance when we get the whole 16, 17 or 18. And let me bring this to you, because we know and you know that for some golfers or the general golfer, there may be a fear when they think of, you know, the term strength and conditioning, because you said, you know, look at some of those guys, look at Franco Colombo, look at some of those guys back in the day, the whole thing. But, but you know, you just talked about it. You just saw a guy, Darren Pang working on his range of motion he wasn't lifting anything no. he, he wasn't necessarily straining himself um i think that's the thing that that the folks watching as we go along i, I want them to understand this doesn't have to be for the two handicap or no. the guy that's trying to be a pro and 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 you're not going to necessarily treat them at that level. You no. work with each client. We individualize each program for each individual. So whether I'm working with a 12-year-old, a 25-year-old mini tour guy, um, that's a, a young athlete that we work with. Uh, he's just doing a rotational exercise. But we we program designed for anybody. You know, so each individual, we look at the evaluation, we look at the movement screen, we look at the TPI screen for golfers. We come up with a game plan to fix issues, to limit restrictions. So, you know, Hanger was limited on his rotational movements, you know, and that could be affecting his distance. Also, getting his hamstrings looser, getting his core a little stronger to protect his back, you know, and to loosen up the, the back side of the body. A lot of golfers get tightness through their posterior chain, uh, which is the back side of the body. Most activities that we do 
our, our front dominant, our push muscle groups are strong, our quadriceps, our chest. Where we're neglected is typically our pull muscle groups, which would be our hamstrings, glutes, low back. So we want to make sure that we're structurally balanced from right to left, front to back. You know, we had this young golfer in here about a half hour ago. You know, we're swinging the club both left-handed and right-handed. You know, so we're getting the body turning both directions. We're not just going to swing the club over and over again right-handed. We want to strengthen both sides of the body so that turn is equal to both sides of the body throughout the motion. Well, and I know we're going to talk about it probably a little bit when we get into specific groups, but and that may pertain to seniors a little bit, but you also deal with, I'm going to say range of motion, but also physical limitations that, you know, people have had over years and maybe don't realize that's why they can't necessarily take it as far back or potentially hit it as far, but there are different things that you can work with them at. And and then again, and again, we're talking about the, the guy that's coming out to the, the golf course to play on a Saturday or gal that plays on a Tuesday. We're not talking about the highest level. Yeah, we had a, a guy come into family golf last week. He plays in a nine hole league uh, every Tuesday night. He's a 25 handicapper. And last year he went from hitting the ball about 210, 215. He's down to 190. You know, we found a lot of issues in his body and how it moves. Um, and for him, you know, we're not worried about him bench pressing. You know, he had a pre-existing injury that probably led to some scar tissue that built up over time. So between myself giving him homework to do, between him coming into the gym and, and seeing myself or one of my TPI guys, and then also with Dr. Mike Murphy with Performance Chiropractic, he's doing some soft tissue work. So. You could have a shoulder injury that could have scar tissue built up and we might need to get that released in order to get it moving better. So it's the combination and what's great about Family Golf Center is myself and Dr. Mike Murphy are down there quite a bit. And, and we're a team with Adam Betts, with all his guys. We're working to help the golfer, help the St. Louis community improve the golf game. And obviously as, as word of mouth grows, we're going we're gonna to continue to grow down at Family Golf Center. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. And I think I, I think about the amounts of money, frankly, that are spent on clubs, balls, shoes, shirts, the whole schmear, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, for a couple of hours, a month, you know, a couple of months with you to get the basics, to get the understandings, so that you can give them the tools to move forward and not only to play better, but feel better after a round, um, be stronger, be healthier, depending on what level they want to take it to. You can, you can set it up for whatever they want. Absolutely. We want to guide everybody to, to learn how to control their body, learn how to train properly. You know, we learned from mistakes. I wrestled in college. It was squat as heavy as you can, lift as heavy as you can with awful form. Myself and my buddies that I wrestled with, our bodies broke down. We were all hurt. So my background being in sports medicine, athletic training, whereas my degree is in is great. But I got more into the strength conditioning side to, to learn how to prevent injuries. How do we fix injuries after they happen? So you know, we look at the body, we look at how it moves, you know, with Mike Murphy, we both do assessments together and, and it's really been fun to, to help, help the average Joe golfer as, as well as the high level golfers. And I think we should mention before we move on to certain categories and what you may be able to do or what you think might help them. Um, you know, you also work with the golf profession, golf teaching professional staff that's giving these people instruction at Family Golf Center. So it's just a, it's another tool in the opportunity of playing better or, or feeling better or, or just enjoying the game more. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we all want to make birdies. We all want to lower our handicap. I mean, that's, that's why we play. That's what brings us back each week. You know, there's seven golf professionals, all PGA certified down at Family Golf Center. They have a great team. They have a great network down there of people that we've been helping. And if I screen one of their clients, I'm going to go down there and send them a summary via email or a text to let them know 
what we're working on and do they see anything in the golf swing that we need to know about. But if you haven't been down to the Family Golf Center, it is a, a, a great facility. The junior golf program has just started up. It's so cool to see 30 kids out there chipping and putting and learning the game. Um, we got a couple of yoga classes going down there, going on Tuesdays and uh, I'm sorry, Thursdays and Saturdays. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's the team atmosphere that's cool about helping everybody. A lot of individuals, you know, they go to their guy at the country club or they go see a different trainer or they go see their chiropractor near their house. What's great is the three of us, the golf professional, the chiropractor, Mike Murphy, and myself and my team, we all work together. We all communicate on a regular basis. We're shooting emails and texts back and forth. Uh, we want to help everybody. It's it's a unique situation. Um, I won't say it's a unique concept because it's a great concept and it's, it's working and it's only going to get better and people are going to be more understanding. You talked about the junior, the junior golfer, and we showed the picture uh, of the young gentleman that, that was uh, working with you. Um, I want to go through some categories. Sure. Um, you know, let's talk about a high school golfer, a, a sophomore trying to make the team at Kirkwood, because sure. you're going to work with that young man or lady differently than you are going to work with the senior golfer. So what can you do? for that that high school golfer that's trying to make the team so for instance this morning i had a dad and a son here uh his son's a sophomore at slew um you know they started about six weeks ago with us um his kids dropped strokes he's hitting the ball farther and for him it was it was more just training properly and learning his body you know him and his dad they're going to walk 18 holes at bell reef today um, they came in and worked out this morning and, and we're lucky enough to ha to help him. He's playing JV and he's going to get more starts. I'm sure he'll get called up to varsity soon, uh, but we got a handful of slew guys and CBC guys and DeSmet and Chaminade and Kirkwood golfers, which is great. We love helping the kids. The biggest thing at their age is, is teaching them how to train properly. So many high school weightlifting classes as a freshman, these kids have to take and yep. they have they have the football coach in there telling them they have to bench press a certain weight. They have to, and then they get in there and they want to compete with their buddy, you know, so we might have a, a 180 pound guy and then we have a 110 pound sophomore trying to out bench each other, which to me, it's not functional <laughs> to any sport unless you're a power lifter and you're going to train to be a power lifter and not <laughs> for the Olympics. Then we might train you that way, but we want these kids to learn their body get their core stronger, get their hamstrings, their back, you know, looser. Everybody these days is on their cell phones or their heads are forwards or typing away at a computer. We want to teach them to learn to bring their shoulders together, to have good posture. Um, and you think about if, if I'm rounded in a golf swing, how's my turn going to be? If I have a neutral set, obviously, you know, you can rotate a lot better when your shoulders are, are in the proper biomechanic position. You know, I was reading earlier while I was doing some stuff on the learning more about the TPI, about how many people are are, are somewhat limited with with neck movement, and, and and we're not talking necessarily that we're wanting you to to move your neck in the golf swing, but there's natural things that happen, and yes. that TPI, the stuff that you guys do, you know, I don't want to get too technical, can really find the spots yeah so obviously one of the tests we do is we look at your cervical rotation so the test is you'll turn your head as far as you can without shrugging your shoulders see if you can touch your chin your collarbone so why is that test important in golf <laughs> let's see it jay no i'm not doing it, <laughs> not doing it. Right. it takes fifty dollars to make me holler <laughs> I'll, I'll screen you next time i see you but as we're rotating in a golf swing and we're keeping our head on the golf ball, what happens every time we do that? Our chin is going to get to our clavicle or to our collarbone. So if we don't have that rotation, we might come out of it and then we're going to come through with an open face that's going to cause that big slice. Um, so one of the easiest drills for that is just sitting in your chair with good posture, rotating your head as far as you can, pausing coming back to neutral, pausing. Uh, the test that you're showing there that we did with Darren Pang was a, a rotational movement test 
we're just looking at, at how the upper body moves. So if you see how much further, obviously I'm a little younger and I didn't have all the injuries that, that Darren Pang had through his playing career, but you can see how limited on his backswing is. It. So if we can get that 5%, 10%, 15% further, well, we're going to have much more club head speed coming through an impact. And we're going to be using our, our, our big muscles. We're not going to be reliant so much on our wrists and our hands. Well, that, that's that perfect little thing. We talked about that range of motion where, or, or that physical limitation where over the years and the wear and tear and what Darren did, he's limited as to what he yeah. can do. But there are ways to get five or 10 more percent and, and, and feel comfortable. Next category. Sure. You you know them, and and you may say Jay, they may not be right unless they want to, but it's the guy that plays on the weekends with his buddies, may have a couple of beers. They're you they're the afternoon group, a lot of them, um, and and he's you know eighteen to thirty handicap, and he's just out there having fun. But what can you do? Well, the same thing we would do with any golfer. We would want him to to come in for the movement screen, come in for the assessment. And we want to give them some homework to do. A lot of guys go to the gym and, and they don't really have a plan to follow. They don't really have a, a, a program designed for them. They might find a workout on the internet or they might do something their buddies are doing. They all go to the gym. They go to the same workout. We want to individualize and structure a program for each individual. So we have guys that come in and train with us on a regular basis. We have guys that come in once a month and get a program and they might do it at home or they might do it at Gold's Gym or Lifetime Fitness or another facility, and that's more cost effective for a lot of people. And every four weeks, we recommend changing the program. So most people come into a gym, they do the same exercises over and over again, they get on the elliptical, they do 10 minutes, they go do their circuit of machines, but their body gets stuck in those same habits, those same patterns. So we have to keep your body guessing. We have to do different angles, different range of motions. So every four weeks, we like to change the program. So if I have a college golfer that's here for three months in the summer, we're going to get through three full phases. And then when they go back to college, we're going to give them a program to follow while they're at school if they don't have a strength coach that they work with. But for the average handicap guy, 20 handicapper that's going out to Gateway or, or going out to Innsbruck to play some golf, you know, we just want to get them stretching, get them moving better, learning how to control his body so that he might have an advantage when it comes to playing against his buddies. Everybody wants to beat their friends. Everybody wants to, you know, go low or break 90 or break 80. You know, that that's the goal. We have a, um, I got a text message last night from a 76 year old guy who spends his time in Naples. He was in the A flight as club championship and him and his buddy member member, they won it. So next weekend they're playing and, and, and he's excited. So he's taking so, less. Let me stop you there. You, you, you said 76? Yes. All right. What do you do for him? Because somebody out there that's going to watch this and they're going to be 76. And, and so, so what do you do for that guy? So he's been coming in for, I'd say, the last 10 years or so, twice a week when he's in town. He spends about three months in Naples. So he comes in twice a week. We strength train, we stretch, we work on speed, um, club head speed. We, we, we might throw some medicine balls, you know, and, and he had a previous hip surgery. So after we rehabbed his hip replacement, you know, we kind of had to start from scratch all over again, but he didn't play golf for a year after his hip replacement and it, and it bothered him. He wanted to get back to where he was. So he's taking lessons with Todd Meyer here. He signed up for a package with Adam Betts. What was really cool is he turned 76, took two lessons with Adam, and went and shot his age, 76. And he hasn't shot a 76 in about 10 years. And he could not have been more happy. He plays um, plays out in Eureka at, um, what's the course? Boone, Boone, right Boone Valley. Valley. Uh, not Boone Valley, uh, right by Keeley. The legend. Oh, Crescent, the legend. Farms. Crescent Farms. So he plays, oh, okay. out, he plays out there on a regular basis, and he shot a 76. Hasn't done that in 10 years out there. You know, to, so, you know, to see a guy like that have success, obviously we got guys like Skip, which it's awesome to see the level that they're at. Um, but also that guy in Naples texted me last night saying, guess what? We won the member member. Um, you know, it's, it's exciting to, to, to see that he's down there having success still. 
Yeah, I mean, you've you've worked with you've worked with and still do the highest level of professional athletes or amateur on the golf side or however it be. Yeah. But and knowing some of the people like yourself that have done that and have been involved in it, you take as much enjoyment as Joe Blow winning the club pro is Absolutely. somebody hoisting a cup. Yeah, so it's it's cool. Obviously, you know, I've been lucky enough to work with some phenomenal athletes. Uh, we had three NHL All Stars last year, which which was remarkable to go down there and see them. You know, at the pinnacle of their career. Um, but also, you know, when Skip's playing in a tournament down in you know Branson, I'm checking the scores. You know, when the guys down in Florida, I'm texting them, say, Hey, how's your golf game? Are you doing your stretches? Are you doing your homework? You know, so we we love we, we can't just rely on the pro athletes. You know, they're only here for a short window, three to four months a year. You know, it's also helping the general population have success or the high school athlete or the junior athlete. All right. I, 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 we're going to next time you're on, we're going to talk about gals. We talked a, in term gals in terms of lessons <laughs> uh, and, and what or, and how you can help them, because it is a category out there. But yeah. in our remaining time, and I, I want to start with this picture. And, and, and Bryson DeChambeau won at Bay Hill last weekend. He's He's got a huge chance at the Players' Championship. Folks, that was July of 2018. Hi, here I am. <laughs> that, that was September of, <laughs> of, of 2020. I mean, look at the, the guns. I mean, so uh, you know how this is done if somebody wants to do it and and I'm sure you're fascinated by it and and may even in a sense want a guy like that um what did he do and and how did he do it well so from what I understand is he was working with one of the Denver Broncos strength coaches and I'm not 100% sure but I, I'm pretty sure that's what I read or I, I've been told He's having something like seven protein shakes a day, and he's probably consuming four to 5,000 calories a day, which, which is remarkable. I mean, that's a full-time job in itself, <laughs> to consume that many calories. You know, I look at it this way, is, is, is how sustainable is that? Maybe right. he's going to change the game. Maybe his body will break down. You know, you look at Tiger Woods in the 90s and early 2000s, he was maybe a buck 70 to a buck 80. And then he bulked up and then he started having back issues. Is it correlated? I don't know. Obviously, Bryson has the financial means to hire the staff, hire the chef, hire the therapist, hire the trainers, which is great. Most average Joes don't have that, sure. that ability. You know, my concern is looking at a youth golfer. Is he going to want to try to hit it 325 yards because Bryson is? Yeah. Well, it's good and to a certain extent, but if we lose accuracy, are you better off being 140 yards away and in the fairway or being 110 yards away and in the deep rough? Obviously, if we get a wedge in our hands, you know, the margin of error is probably going to be less. Um, I mean, it's remarkable what Bryson is doing. I know a lot of people love him. A lot of people hate him. I respect for what he did. And, and he's kind of a nerd. He likes to tinker with things. You know, he's a a mathematician type of guy, you know, so he probably said, if I can hit it further, you know, you look at, I think Rory did an interview yesterday where he talked about after the U S open and seeing what Bryson did, he was trying to just hit the ball as far as he could. And then yesterday he misses the cut at the players. So, right. so our guys going to try to be more like, I mean, you look at Zach Johnson, he's making the cut and he's probably hitting at 275 right now. You know, and he's made every cut, I think, this year. But then a guy like Rory, he's he's missed the cut at the players five five times, which to me, it's a stat like that guy should wow. be in the top 10 almost every week. Um, yeah. But I respect what Bryson's doing. Obviously, distance is key, you know, but there's ways to add distance without risking injury, without having a kid bulk up to, you know, 195 pounds from 165 you know, I see so many coaches tell me, you got to get bigger, you got to get stronger, you know, but if it compromises your ability to play, if it compromises or risk injury, is that something we want to do? You know, 
we have tons of kids that come in here at 140 pounds. Yeah, we put them on protein shakes. We might have them eat five to six eggs a day, but that's to add muscle mass to, to get them to the average weight for their team or their sport. Um, like I said, it's impressive what Bryson is doing. Um, I know one of my trainers here can't stand him. He hates, <laughs> he, he hates the hat he wears. We had a client buy him one of those hats for Christmas, and it was pretty funny. I, and, and and there's an you know I I can't understand it I I so I I marvel at it I, I was one that was in the camp of what I I couldn't stand it because I didn't understand it and yeah. then once I accepted the fact that I'm not going to understand it. I mean I I understand it but I don't understand it and you know the 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 one of the big things about it is. He believes in all of it. Yes. I mean, that's a big aspect aspect for him. Is and and I think he also believes if I hit one or two more balls than this guy, I got a better chance of beating yeah. him. Yeah, and even yesterday he got done and he was on the range. I mean, bombing drivers and right to me, it's like, are you better off resting? Are you better off seeing a chiropractor, seeing a massage therapist at that point? You know, so we'll see what happens this weekend. We see if he can sustain that for another two rounds. Um, you know, I, I don't want to tell people to bulk up and add, you know, but but golf is an endurance sport. We don't need to be lean and fast. It's a quick, it's a powerful motion. So he could have his body fat at 20% and be fine. You know, right. most athletes, especially the college professional ones, it's, it's an endurance sport. We like to see them about 8 to 12% body fat. Um, but for Bryson, it's just a one-time, quick, explosive, powerful movement. You know, you did see last week when he drove that ball 370 on that par five. Right. But I still think he got the same score as Westwood got, you know. So so it's like half a dozen of one, or, you know what I mean? Or, or No, I, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir. It's, it's a fascinating case study because there's not another one. You know, there's there's not four. You can't you can't tell. There's four or five guys that play the way Bryson does and is the way Bryson does. You can say there are four or five guys that play like Max Homer, or Scotty Scheffler, this guy. Yeah. That's why it's so polarizing, and that's why it's somewhat forty forty, and then twenty of us that just are like, "What's going on?" Yeah. So he's, he's definitely building up his brand and getting the Oh, no doubt. Well, let's build up yours. Let's remind people they can get the elevated performance at, at Family Golf uh, Center. Um, and again, if, if you've got somebody that is, is even not a golfer, um, you can help them in other sports or just fitness. Yeah, we, you know, our, our, our biggest sports are probably hockey and golf, field hockey, lacrosse, um, soccer. We get tons of high school athletes, tons of college athletes. It's it's really cool to have a diverse population here. Um, you can contact us at Elevated Performance website, at Family Golf website. Uh, my main location is located at 270 in Manchester in De Pair. Uh, the other location over at Family Golf Center is over in Kirkwood near Greenbrier Country Club. Uh, we'd love to help anybody we can. You can contact me, 314-714-3295. There's also a tab on the Family Golf website that email goes right to myself. I'll get back to you as soon as I get it. But whether you're a weekend warrior, whether you're a junior golfer that wants to come in with their mom or dad or sibling, or whether you're a high school golfer at SLU, we want you to, to perform at a high level. Obviously, a guy like Skip, he's worked his butt off this winter. He just went down to TaylorMade, got fitted in Atlanta. Uh, he saw his golf instructor, John Tattersall, who's a great guy. Um, I think his six iron club head speed this winter from last winter increased six miles per hour. And that, that, that's remarkable. You know, at, Skip's not a 22 year old guy. No, we're, he isn't. We're not, we're not training him like Bryson, but it's about committing, buying in, believing in what we're doing. You know, so many people, they want results in two to three weeks, but you know, Skip's been with us for five sure. seven, seven years and he's realized if I want to keep playing at a high level and keep up with the kids, I got to take this more serious. Um, so John told him, keep doing what you're doing. I don't see a six mile per hour club head speed increase on a six iron with most of my college kids. So, you know, Skip's going to have a shorter club in his hand. He's going to be proximity of the holes, hopefully going to be better. And as you know, he can roll the putter. 
Wow, now you got me excited about the upcoming golf season for the skipper. (laughs) Um, Crash, thanks so much. Great information. Keep helping folks. Keep making people better and healthier, and uh, we'll do it again in a couple weeks, my man. Jay, I appreciate all you do for the golf community, and uh, I'm glad you uh, are part of Family Golf and part of what we're doing here at Elevated Performance. We want to help anybody we can, so thank you. You got it, my man. We'll see you next time, folks. Take care, Jay.